it's Andrea Tooley and I'm here with another video for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, quick before we get started, I just want to remind everyone to subscribe to this channel so that you never miss a video. Um, leave your comments below. We love hearing from you. We love interacting with you. Uh, if you want to interact with me even more, you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, if you're interested in talking further, we can Skype. All that information is on my blog, andreatooley.com. Okay, so now we'll get started. I am so honored to be here today with Dr. Pratish Tosh, who is a consultant here at Mayo Clinic. Uh, Dr. Tosh is really involved with uh, the resident education and kind of interacting with us as residents. And he has an incredible career and is a mentor to many of us. So I'm really excited for him to impart his wisdom onto all of us today. So welcome, Dr. Tosh. Thank you very much. And thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, and a little bit about my background, uh, how I got into infectious diseases. Um, I, I grew up in Missouri, went to the University of Missouri, then went there for undergraduate and medical school, and then came to Mayo Clinic for my internal medicine residency. And so there I learned how to be a, a great internist. And then after that, I, you know, within internal medicine, just adult doctor stuff, I decided, wow, what I really am interested in are infectious diseases. Things such as tuberculosis, HIV, and sometimes even some scarier things, uh, SARS, MERS, Ebola, these sorts of things, bird flu. Um, and so I, I got uh, more interested in that, and I did another three-year training per uh, period after internal medicine. So internal medicine was three years, and then I did another three-year training in infectious diseases. Uh, and then after that, I went to the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, in the Epidemic Intelligence Service, which sounds, uh, which is as cool as it Super sounds. Super cool. Uh, and so this is a group that since the 1950s has been investigating every major outbreak that you have heard of, including uh, being involved in smallpox eradication. They're involved right now in eradicating polio. Uh, we're involved and have been involved in, in getting rid of the Ebola from West Africa, you know, MERS, uh, avian influenza. All these things. Uh, Epidemic Intelligence uh, Service is a training program for people uh, either post-PhD or after they get their MD. I've done a little bit of training. And it's really real-world epidemiology, um, getting your feet on the ground and, and really stopping outbreaks. Um, so I did that for two years, and then I came back uh, to Mayo Clinic, uh, where I do a combination of clinical infectious diseases, so I take care of patients uh, who have infections. But also, I'm involved in our disaster preparedness uh, response to things such as such as Ebola. Uh, you know, we did not have any cases here, but certainly we needed to be prepared to take care of a patient in case uh, one did show up. And so I have a very uh, you know, rich career already uh, so far uh, involving a lot of different aspects, including the care of patients, uh, medical education with, with our residents and medical students as well as our fellows, um, and then also uh, the piece about disaster preparedness and, and disaster response. Uh, so that's most of what I do, and it's uh, certainly a full-time job, and I enjoy it. Yeah, deal. that's a lot. You're doing a lot. It's, it's <laughs> fun. I enjoy it. That's really good. Okay, so uh, just to break it all down, because I know I didn't know all of this when mm -hmm. I was pre-med. So you did four years of undergrad, four years of medical school, mm -hmm. three years of internal medicine residency. Right. We are trained to just be a general physician. Yeah, a general adult doctor. Adult doctor, and then three more years of infectious disease fellowship. That's right. Okay. And then two more years <laughs> in the epidemic intelligence okay. service, uh, which is more more of a fellowship uh, okay. as, as well. And okay. So that's a lot of training, yes. uh, but it's uh, been very valuable. It's been enjoy I have enjoyed it the entire way. That's so great. So what exactly do you think made you make the decision to do ID? Yeah. I know you said you like the bugs and everything, but what about the career was it for you? So a lot of this for me in infectious diseases comes to what is the most impact we could possibly have sure. uh, in global health. So even though we'll put you know $10,000 stents in people's coronary arteries, <laughs> keep them alive, the most impact we have had in medicine is through sanitation and vaccination. Right. And, uh, and for example, before the year 2000, 600,000 children would die each year across the world from measles. And just by incre increasing the amount of vaccination wow. across the world, that number is down to 150,000, which is still a lot. Uh, but that's, that's, that's the kind of impact that you can have 
in, when you're talking about infectious diseases. Okay. And so uh, it's you know, beyond just the individual patient, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, you can also have a very global look at, at, at how to improve human health. But then you look at the individual. So um, being involved in the care of patients with HIV, yeah. uh, which previous, previously was a death sentence, if you will, and yeah. in some parts of the world that don't have access to uh, some of our uh, modern medicines, it's still a, a very uh, fatal disease. But uh, in the United States, and people who have access to American medical, uh, the American medical system and sort of advanced medical care, HIV is now a chronic disease, meaning that uh, people who are diagnosed with HIV and can take one pill once a day wow. will live a normal life. And that is, uh, if, if I had a time machine, we went back to 19... You know, 86 and told people that, you know, that there's no way they would believe me sure. uh, but we take people who um, had come into the office thinking they're about to die and have them uh, leaving realizing that they're gonna have a very normal and rewarding life and so those are the kinds of things you can do in infectious diseases yeah. um, my, one of my subspecialty areas within infectious diseases is the care of patients with cancer and so some of these cancers are potentially curable, lymphoma, leukemia, yeah. some of these blood cancers especially, where uh, after you, they get through chemotherapy, their, their white blood cells are down there, they can get infected with the kinds of environmental molds that we would normally breathe in and then just do fine with, but those can kill those patients. And so if I'm able to get them through that dangerous period, mm -hmm. they could potentially live a long, normal life. Um, and so it is, uh, that is really exciting for me to be involved in their care, yeah. uh, but it really takes a lot of subspecialty expertise and mm -hmm. it takes a lot of training um, to, to do that. So I, I, I like it from a uh, patient care point of view, but mm -hmm. also uh, it really is a, it takes a lot of time and, and you have to really learn uh, a lot about these bugs. Yeah. Some of the differences between say cardiology or, or pulmonology or some of these other things uh -huh. where people are learning more and more about the heart or right. more and more about the lungs, but the lungs and heart themselves are not changing. Sure. Which is different than infectious diseases, where, sure, we're learning more about the diseases we already know, but there are also new diseases that are constantly emerging. Yep. So you really have to be on your game and really know about what's going on uh, globally, because what you knew 10 years ago certainly has changed. Wow. That sounds so rewarding. And just how you said it, how you can impact patients and go from extremely sick to telling them they're going to have a normal life. That's incredible. It is uh, It is one of those careers that is very rewarding because of that. Yeah. We talk about cure of disease mm -hmm. for the most part. And even with HIV, we we're talking yeah. about uh, getting it so that they basically are live a normal life with normal life expectancy. And, right. uh, very, we've now done it one pill once a day. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Um, and it's, it's a very rewarding career. Yeah. Because of that. Okay. So do you see mostly patients in the hospital or do you balance outpatient and inpatient care? How does that yeah. work in ID? So most of my career is within the hospital. Okay. And, and when we're looking at patients, my two areas especially, is uh, infections in patients with critical illness. So they uh -huh. come to an ICU because of an illness or develop an illness, an infection while in the ICU. Yep. So that's one piece. And the other one is infections in patients with cancer. Uh -huh. And the vast majority of that is within the hospital. So often these are followed by another doctor, in fact, every time. Uh, so in that ICU care, they're followed by a critical care doc. Right. In the hospital for the hematologic malignancy, the cancer piece, mm -hmm. they're followed by a team of cancer doctors. Yep. Uh, and they ask for my input on how I can help them with a specific type of mm -hmm. infection, or how do we, you know, the person looks infected, but I don't know what. Mm -hmm. How do we work that out? Mm -hmm. And so uh, because those areas are largely in the hospital, most of what I do is in the hospital. But different infectious diseases doctors do different things. Uh -huh. um, some people uh, who deal with, say, infections in, after uh, orthopedic implants, people who have mm -hmm. artificial hips that occasionally, say, can get infected. So some of that's in the hospital, but a lot of that is also goes in the outpatient. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, HIV care or tuberculosis. Similarly, right. uh, they may have a little bit in the hospital, but a lot of that is also in the clinic in the outpatient area. So you really can tailor it based on what your interests okay. are. Um, and really what the needs of the patient are. Okay, that's good. So it sounds like you get some continuity with patients you could see for many years, some just short-term, you see them in the hospital when they're super sick, and then you have some 
I'd say maybe the majority of your patients are super sick. You deal yeah. with sick patients. Those like, are that's really my my skew mm -hmm. uh, because I'm interested in, in emerging infections right. and these sort of things. Right. And so that's skewed my career towards mm -hmm. the areas where highly acute patients who uh, usually require hospitalization. Right, but you don't necessarily have to. That no. you can kind of tailor it how you like. There's a lot yeah, of variety. A lot of options within infectious mm -hmm. diseases. That's right. See, and that's even stuff that I didn't know how much variety there was or how you could kind of change it depending on, you know, what you prefer. Yeah. Some people Very really cool. like uh, some of the outpatient clinical uh, things and have a very rewarding career, especially mm -hmm. when you're dealing with HIV. I mean, that is, yeah. uh, that is one of the most rewarding things I think any physician can do. Uh, you take people who thought they were going to die and have them step out of their, your office. Uh, excited about life and yeah. living a, a full and rewarding uh, life. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Very cool. All right. Well, after that great overview of ID, <laughs> thank you so much. Sure. Um, I also want to kind of pick your brain just about any wisdom you can impart onto us as students. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of told you that a lot of you watching today are probably high school students or college students interested in medicine, and you've had a very successful path. What kinds of things do you wish you knew, or what yeah. kinds of things do you want to tell kind of the budding physicians? Yeah, I think when you start getting into college, and for those of you who are interested in, in getting into medical school, I mean, it can be a daunting thought yes. that you have to maintain this uh, just level of, of, of excellence, if you will, mm -hmm. through undergraduate to get into medical school, and it can be, oh, why can I, I don't know if I can do this for four years. Uh, and so you don't have to think about it that. Uh, your goal should be is to do really, really well, get a 4-0, whatever, your first semester. Because the, the difficulty with college is adjusting your time schedule and your priorities yep. uh, to balance life as well as school. Mm -hmm. And if you can make it a point to get a, say, a 4-0 or mm -hmm. do a, a, the absolute best you can your first semester, mm -hmm. then you will have built up the strategy Mm -hmm. on how to continue that success for the rest of the time. So you don't have to yeah. think about it in four years. You really just have to think about doing really well your first semester. Because okay. once you do that, you'll have uh, figured out what you have to do, what the priorities yep. have to be, so you can have a, a, a good life, yeah. because college is fun, um, <laughs> but also do well and, and get into medical school. So don't think about the four years. Just think about your first semester. Okay. That's really good advice. And same thing with medical school. You could say Absolutely. first semester, first year. Yeah, that, you know, that's the next transition. Uh, getting so Starting medical school, that uh, can be daunting. Uh, there's a lot you have to learn, and, and suddenly your, your, your peers are also very, very smart. And yeah. How do you uh, do as well as they are, and how do you, uh, you know, work with them, or your other students, to be very collaborative and help everybody else out, yourself mm -hmm. and everybody else. And so if you figure out during your first first block, first semester, whatever it's going to be, how to succeed in medical school, then the rest of it's going to follow. I think of it as a like a soccer game, uh, and that if you uh, score a couple goals early, really you're going to be unbeatable. Okay. Uh, whereas if you come, go down a couple goals too early, oh. it's going to be really hard to come back. Sure. Okay. That's, really, that's so good. I've never thought about it that way. Well, I, play, I watch a lot of soccer. <laughs> okay, good. That makes sense. All right, and then um, make, what about making the transition from medical school to residency? How, how do you succeed in that kind of area? Yeah, that is also, these are all daunting transitions. Yes, exactly. This is, uh, suddenly you've gone through pre you know, playing doctor, mm -hmm. if you will, in, yes. in medical school, to suddenly people depending on you yep. for life and death uh, decisions. And uh, the good thing is that you really are never alone mm -hmm. in a training there's always somebody you can talk to and the idea of a residency training program is not to uh, have you be a warm body to fill this role to do this work mm -hmm. but the residency program should be there to turn you to, to take great medical students and turn them into outstanding physicians educators and researchers and they should have the structure in place mm -hmm. to do just that okay that's really good okay so you've kind of told us all about infectious disease, how to kind of succeed in yeah. college and in medical school, making transitions to residency. Um, another thing I was going to ask you, I get so many emails from you guys, and many people ask, 
how do you go about choosing a specialty? And you told us what you love about infectious disease. Mm -hmm. How would you advise someone? What types of things should they think about when deciding what kind of doctor they want to be? Yeah, I got to tell you, it, uh, it hit me in medical school what I was going to do. Okay. It was my fourth year. Uh, during my first and second year, maybe because I watched too much television, I thought I was going to be an emergency room doctor. Okay. <laughs> and other of my friends actually went to that, and that's, uh -huh. that's fine. But I, I, uh, during my fourth year, uh, I really fell in love with infectious disease. It just sort of hit me. Mm -hmm. And then I was, clearly, this is, this is the, way, the way I'm going to go. Right. Um, something that also is mentorship, in that uh, during medical school, I was uh, the profe the, actually the uh, president of our graduate professional student body. And I was working very closely with the uh, head of the faculty council mm -hmm. of the of the university, mm -hmm. and he happened to be an infectious diseases doctor. Ah. And I saw that his career was something that that you know, I, I could see myself doing. Sure. And you know, he spoke very passionately about the work he did, and it was hard to ignore that. And that I, I was working with the guys you know, right. so much, and so I saw what he saw, uh, and that just sort of built my interest. Uh, yeah, I can't say uh, it will usually hit you, um, at least it did for me. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it if you don't know yeah. first and second year, keep an open You're mind. You're not supposed to know. Okay. Uh, I thought I knew, and I was wrong. Yep. Uh, and yeah, you're not supposed to know. You should really have an open mind. Have an idea of what you're looking for, the uh -huh. type of things, whether you, uh, you prefer uh, continuity of care versus sort of acute management of specific things. Yeah. Uh, but no matter what you're doing, you could probably find a subject matter that, that interests you and tailor that to the type of medicine you'd like to do. Mm -hmm. You're right. There's a lot more freedom within each specialty than maybe we traditionally think of. Yeah. And you can tailor it like you have to doing exactly what you're passionate about. Absolutely. That's really great. Okay. Anything else you can think of to no. put out there uh, to the world? Not too much. I think... Uh, infectious diseases are often not, especially people think about. Yep. Um, that, you know, every, I think everyone's heard of a cardiologist or mm -hmm. a surgeon, uh, but uh, in, in the world, you need more infectious diseases doctors if you want to um, reduce the actual mortality uh, you know, across the planet. Yeah. And still the vast majority of deaths across the world are related to infectious diseases mm -hmm. that can often be stamped out just through good sanitation and vaccination. So it is a very rewarding career that most of you probably have never heard of, um, but uh, absolutely is the, the best decision I've ever made. That's so great. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. I think this is really helpful for me, for everybody. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to leave your comments, let us know what you think, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.